Hello, today I'm going to be talking about clinical trials. Many of you have probably seen the term clinical trials used frequently in the press, especially now due to the current global pandemic. In this video, I'd like to talk a little more about what clinical trials are and how they are carried out. A clinical trial is simply a research process which is used to evaluate a novel form of treatment in patients. So it's a very simple concept. However, another term you need to get to grips with is a control or a control group. This is a group of participants who are not given the new treatment or the tested treatment so that there can be a valid comparison between the clinical trial group. Here is an example of an early basic clinical trial conducted by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He compared a diet consisting only of meat and wine, which is a diet he favored, to those of other members of the royal family, which is a mixed but largely vegetable-based diet. He looked at the two groups and after a period of 10 days analyzed who were in better health, showing that the mixed diet vegetable-based eaters were considered to be more healthy than the solely meat and wine eaters. He then made a, a public health announcement advertising his results. In modern day time, we use something called a blind randomized control trial as the gold standard. I'm going to explain the components of this now with the following diagram. It is a randomized trial because all of the participants are randomly grouped into both a drug and a control trial. This is not controlled by the experimenters in order to avoid bias. It is also blind because the, the two groups do not know which one is taking the drug and which one is taking a control or placebo before they are administered their treatment. Hence, this also limits bias or placebo effect from the participants in the study. Now let's look further into how clinical trials are structured. There are three phases within clinical trials, aptly named phase one, two, and three. These investigate safety, efficacy, and conformational studies respectively. To take a further look at this, let's start at phase one clinical trials. These are small trials usually consisting of 20 to 80 participants which investigate safety, dosage, and side effects. Phase two is a two-part trial, which normally consists of a few dozen to 300 participants. In part A, the trial looks at the efficacy of the drug, and in part B, the trial looks at finding the optimal dosage. Phase three trials consists of 300 to 3,000 participants and is used for confirming the results from the previous two trials on a larger scale. The data collected is also very useful when comparing the drug candidate to other current treatment options. Here is a generic timeline showing a, how a drug progresses from before, during, and after clinical trials, and how long it takes. By adding up all the time taken during this pipeline, it shows that drugs take over 10 years to go from lab to marketplace. One common concern when discussing clinical trials is if control patients still receive the treatment they need. The answer to this is yes. The control patients still receive all the standard care that they need for their affliction, just not the drug that is issued in the clinical trial. So even though some patients may be tested with the drug or others with the placebos by the experimental practitioners, they receive the, the care regardless of what group they are in that is necessary to treat their disease. Thank you for listening and I hope you've learned something about clinical trials.